guys and welcome back today we're gonna to be looking at an educational informative video based on the build that i recommend on hag as of the current patch that we have as well so you might be wondering what build do i recommend now much like a lot of killers i generally follow the four basic principles when it comes to playing this killer now keeping in mind before we go into details about the hag the four basic principles are as follows a gen protection perk a situational awareness perk a stall perk and a utility perk now i am lacking a situational awareness perk based on the fact I have monitor, but I'll explain all that why momentarily. What does the hag do? Right, Lisa is known for her finger paintings. So she does a finger painting on the ground. If a trap is triggered, which means the survivor has ran over it, or walked over it, or been anywhere near it not using urban evasion, it will explode and light up. She will A clone called a mud clone or mud phantom will come out of the ground and scream. It isn't actually Lisa. However, Lisa gets an indicator, Lisa being the hag, where she can press the control key, which will allow her to teleport and become the mud clone. It would do like a little phasing predator kind of thing, so a survivor knows that she did it, keeping in mind she can teleport straight away, as long as she's within 40 meters of the triggered trap. Now, she's only 110% movement speed killer. She is the shortest killer in the game, even shorter than Freddy. That being said, that means her line of sight is a lot lower than other killers. She does have a 24 meter heartbeat, she can teleport 40 meters. It takes her two seconds to put a finger painting down. She doesn't have to walk around the board and collect them like the trapper does to his bear traps. She can just paint them wherever. If she puts more than 10 paintings on the ground, the next painting she puts down will replace the first painting she did place. Her biggest weakness is a flashlight. With a flashlight, you can destroy a trap on the ground, therefore she can't teleport to it. Now, there are many ways to build the hag, and realistically, they're not all correct but at the same time the most common meta way that i see a hag currently built will be corrupt intervention or ruin it'll be modern abuse it'll be nurses calling and it'll be make your choice now let's walk through what i run and why i run it corrupt intervention is going to allow me to seal the three furthest generators away from my starting spawn point for 120 seconds this means that no survivor is going to be able to work on these objectives the entity's hands will be wrapped around the generators and the generators will glow white for me not for the survivors they'll see that they can't work on it but i will know i'll also have a time indicator in the bottom right hand corner which will be a red line going all the way around to seal telling me that i have x amount of time of corrupt intervention left very powerful perk on killers that need prep time even the trapper can backfire on the trapper much like the hag based on the time if you spend too much time prepping and not enough time you see this is really hard to explain on the hag because you don't want to chase as the hag you want to place smart around your placement you want to place in high traffic zones unlike a trapper where you can place at a jungle gym it's much easier to play with the hag in terms of better trap placement in terms of the fact she can just do them really fast but she suffers a five percent diminishing returns to the penalty for the movement that the trapper would not so this allows me to seal the Jennies far away. If you remember, I said she has a 24 meter heartbeat and she can teleport 40 meters. Modern abuse means I now have a 16 meter heartbeat. A 16 meter heartbeat is a tier two equivalent of a Michael Myers without any add-ons or without modern abuse. Therefore, I will have a very small heartbeat. I'll be able to teleport 40 meters. This perk, I alternate as well. Now, before I quickly go into details, I'll talk about other unique perks, but I swap it out for Blood Echo. A lot of people don't agree with Blood Echo on the Hag, but I feel it makes a lot of the higher rank players players hesitate or want to heal or not want to run around what does blood echo do when a survivor is hooked basically every other survivor that is injured will now bleed more meaning their blood will be easier to track it also means they're exhausted for 45 seconds so they can't sprint burst they can't dead hard they can still adrenaline if they pop a generator because adrenaline does trump everything so that is why i run blood echo rather than monitor but i've been having a lot of fun with monitor why do I take Surge? Now, Surge is one of the hidden gem perks in Dead by Daylight. So many people overlook. I recommend this on a lot of the killers. Not all of them, but a lot of the killers. Because this is a massive time saver. Say I was pre prepping a jungle gym, and there's a guy working on a generator beside me. And I was to down one of the people. That generator instantly regresses 8% of what is completed on the Jenny. It takes 80 seconds to do a generator. Therefore, 10% of 80 would be 8. Therefore, we're looking at about 6.2, 6.4 uh, seconds off the Jenny. And then it instantly regresses. The difference between Surge and Pop is Surge requires you to hook a survivor. Then you get to regress one. Surge is whenever you down a survivor anywhere within 32 meters around you. doesn't matter how many generators. One, two, three, four. 
not five because they're not that close, but you get the point, right? Any generator around you that has any work done will instantly start regressing. Now you can see why this is a very good perk. I even recommend it on my nurse based on the fact my rotations on my nurse, but I also have surveillance on her, but that will be in a separate video. So what happens here is I just down Jeff. The last thing I want to do is pick Jeff up, hook him, put a painting under Jeff, run over to a generator, kick the generator, put a painting under the generator, then run across the board. Now I can do one of two things. Pick Jeff up, hook him, put a painting under Jeff if I want or not, and or go straight through the board and get more prep. I don't have to worry about going upstairs to a platform to regress a Jenny because it's instantly regressed because of the information that I know through Surge. Surge will trigger and does have a cooldown too. I This is one of the most hidden gem perks in Dead by Daylight that not a lot of people use. I think when people understand how powerful it is, even though it's been out a while, they'll start using it more. It by far is the best teachable perk that came in with the Demogorgon DLC. Just keeping that in mind. Now the final perk is going to be Sloppy Butcher. Sloppy Butcher is here for consistency of keeping multiple targets injured. Like I said before, Blood Echo only triggers off an injured target that isn't on the hook. So that is something to keep in mind. Realistically, this perk can be replaced with three choices, right? Sloppy Butcher gives you consistency no matter who you hit. It stalls out the game in your favor. If people heal, it takes them additional 8 seconds if they're self-carrying, but a lot more 4 seconds if they're doing it in a team. It just comes in a lot of handy. It doesn't matter if they're the obsession or... No matter who I come across, I can always slow them down. If they're trying to revive a slug from the ground, it will take them longer as well, unless they have botany knowledge to counter sloppy, but the vast majority of people don't. So it's all about consistency. What is a perk that's not about consistency? Well, save the best for last. Is save the best for last the better option? Realistically, yes. If you can get your stacked, it's brilliant. Once, this, once the killer M1's a survivor, she will do an animation where she dribbles blood, and then she recovers from her hat. A hack. A hack? Hat attack. Alright. Every time she does the M1, she'll receive a 5% benefit to her next attack and cooldown between attacks that are successful. A miss doesn't account. So what is save the best for last? Let's take a little bit of a closer look at save the best for last. I see make your choice, which is important. We'll talk about that in a moment. Save the best for last. Every successful M1 you do on a survivor, you will then receive a token. Maximum of 8 tokens. If you are to hit the obsession, you lose 2 tokens. Therefore, an obsession taking a hit will punish you. You will recover off however many tokens you have. If I were to have six tokens at the time, and then M1 somebody and have seven tokens, I will recover off the six tokens. Then I will recover off the seven next attack. Much like before, if I have eight stacks to save the best for last, and I hit the obsession, I will now have six stacks, but I'll recover off eight stacks. Then my next hit will be off six stacks, even though I'll have four stacks left. It's always off the amount of stacks you had before the action was done. You have four, and then you got five, recovers off four. Then the next hit will recover off five. You add six, hit the obsession, recover off four, not off the six. I mean, it will recover off the six, not the four. I'm, I'm making this overcomplicated. Anyways, save the best for last is a great perk rather than make, you, uh, make your choice or sloppy butcher at your own leisure. It is the highest skill gap out of all of them you can do. After you have more than four stacks to save the best for last, a 20% recovery time will allow you to hit control after you M1 the survivor and pretty much teleport on them and M1 them again and they won't get the 150% movement speed depending on your trap placement. Therefore, a lot of high skill hags will recommend save the best for last. I agree. It's a great perk, but I take Sloppy Butcher for the consistency. Keep in mind, Surge activates when I hit a survivor into Dying State. The more people in Dying State, or the more people I can get to Dying State in one attack, the better off I'm going to be. Therefore, the synergy between these two perks. Alternatively, the other perk you could choose to run would be Make Your Choice. Remember, this is a utility perk. You could run Make Your Choice. What does Make Your Choice do? If a survivor is unhooked while you are outside of 32 meters... So even if you have a 16 meter heartbeat, doesn't matter. You have to be 32 meters away, which is a trapper heartbeat, but just by default or the length of whispers. If you're out of that range, the survivor who did the unhook will go down in one hit from you for the next 60 seconds as the hack. Your M1 won't have to take two hits. Very powerful, very good if you want to play around the proxying as a hag, if you want to play around the hook. Remember, you can teleport 40 meters, and this is 32. When a, tra a trap is triggered on the ground and the clone pops up, the clone's there for about three seconds, plenty of time to do the unhook, then you teleport in, then you take the trade. I don't like Make Your Choice because it relies around that kind of gameplay more so, and I would rather have more prep, more information, more rotations throughout the board to apply more pressure based on the fact the current meta is all about destroying generators. 
I mean, not a lot of survivors heal nowadays in the lower ranks, so you got to keep the pressure out as much as you can. Realistically, you could run Ruin and Surveillance. Monitor does work nicely. Another common pick, like I called out before, would be Nurse's Calling. Remember, Nurse's Calling and Monitor means I have a 16 meter heartbeat. I'm the shortest killer in the game, and I can see you healing 28 meters away. Therefore, there's a 12 meter gap before you hear the slightest bit, uh, the slightest bit of a heartbeat. So just keep that in mind too. I don't really like it. I don't recommend it. You could take Pop as well. It just depends on your playstyle. I personally think Surge is an MVP perk on the Hag, much like I think Sloppy Butcher is too. Tell me what you guys recommend on the Hag or what you guys want to run. I know some Hags like to run uh, Blindness. Some la Hags I know like to run Infectious Fright. But let me know in the comments down below, guys. That's going to be all for today's educational informative video. Why I recommend this build at rank 1 as a Hag player. This gives me the most consistency. However, at the same time, like I said, I like to swap in Blood and Echo out on Monitor, especially based on the fact I don't use add-ons and I don't use offerings. Therefore, if you have Monitor abuse on a Hag on a map like Blood Lodge, it's not going to help you as opposed to how much it would help you on an indoor map like Lyrie. So I'd take Blood Echo for the the consistency and try and keep the split pressure out on everyone but thank you all for watching guys make sure you hit the subscribe button for more educational survivor and killer content like this and make sure you pop into the live streams where i stream dvd five days